So now that we've gone through a pretty basic example of how to implement an optimization program in PyOMO, let's move on to something that's a little bit more complicated, a little bit more interesting. So in this example, we'll go through a linear scheduling problem. And the idea for this example is that you have some, let's say a battery, uh, some device that stores energy, and it's uh, taking a charge with, with time its state of charge is varying with time, and it's also producing power. And uh, the important features of this problem are that uh, we're trying to maximize the sales revenue that we get from selling electricity. And if you look at the, the plot here, we have some price schedule that changes with time, right? So we're trying to match the high price points. Um, and we're also taking in energy here with time. And that, the, the two, uh, time series don't exactly match up and when they're you know when you're collecting energy and when you want to sell it so the the goal of this program is to figure out given the resource that I have coming in and given the price schedule that I'm trying to hit when is it best for me to produce energy and how much energy should I produce in each time step so if we're going to go about formulating this problem uh, we need to go through and kind of systematically identify the parameters that are involved the variables that we're trying to solve for, uh, the objective function, and then any other information that we need to, to help us along the way. So let's start by looking at the sets. So first, we need to define a set of all time steps. We're going to call this a set T, or kind of a script T. So T is our notation, uh, another way of writing, um, right? In index T is going to be in the set from one to and so on up to some time uh, duration in this case we've chosen 12 time periods as our limit and so that's our set for this problem uh, now we talk about parameters so these are again uh, pieces of information that are important to the problem if you ran the model in different scenarios or a sensitivity study you might want to vary these parameters uh, one run at a time so here we have um, uh, kind of two different flavors of parameters. We have parameters that have a value that changes with time, right? There's not changing with the variable value, but it's, it's changing with time. Uh, so we can denote that as uh, subscript T. We have a price that's changing with time, P sub T. So for every index value T, you get a different price that's indicated in this uh, schedule down here. Likewise, for our heat addition, we have Q sub T. Uh, and so that we define uh, those by saying you know, it's a price at any time t, where t is in the set, right? This uh, notation here is the same thing as saying in or in the set of t that we've defined before. So that's kind of the first flavor of parameter. The second flavor of parameter is our uh, single value parameters. So unlike p and q, which are vectors, in time we have other parameters that are just single values. And the notation that I've chosen to use is that any index that's varying, or, or any index that's part of a set, we'll say, uh, we make that a subscript, right? So P sub T or Q sub T. And uh, other parameters where you're just trying to be descriptive in the naming, uh, we would put that as a superscript. So here we have our initial storage charge state. That's how much energy is in the battery at time zero. We'll call that S superscript zero uh, and then we have the maximum power that can be sold at any moment in time right it, this keeps us from the trivial solution of um, selling all the power at the peak uh, price period the last thing we need to do is identify variables variables are going to be decisions that the model is making so we call these decision variables um, and the obvious decision variable is how much power are we going to sell at each time period uh, so we introduce a variable here we have lowercase w sub t um, so w sub t is going to have a decision to make uh, it's going to represent the decision that we make at each time step t uh, we also have uh, maybe a more subtle variable which is the state of energy storage at any moment in time now this is not necessarily what we sort of intuitively think of as a variable as something that the solver is going to be uh, kind of you know manipulating directly, but these are uh, it's certainly something that varies with time 
and is something that needs to be determined as part of the optimal solution. Um, so even if the variable like S uh, sub T, the state of ch uh, charge of storage, is highly constrained or entirely constrained um, by other decision variables in the in the uh, uh, in, in the problem, we still need to treat it as a variable, right? We just have to formulate it with the proper constraints to make sure that it matches um, the result that we're trying to, to get.